and a good morning to everybody along the Pacific Coast and a good afternoon to the rest of the United States. And we are going to be going over uh, the tilt up wall design provisions and I hope that there's something for everybody in this presentation. Those of you that are new to tilt up design will be comfortable with the way some of the presentation is being provided. It's going to have some very basic information and those of you that are uh, old hands at uh, tilt up design and have a lot under your belt. Well, there's going to be hopefully something brand new for you as well. So something for everybody, I'm sure. To give you a little bit of, of uh, an overview, the learning objectives of this is really to um, have these five different categories or objectives to be first would be uh, understanding the background of the current implementation of the slender wall design provisions being very different from regular walls, cylinder walls are very unique. And then we'll also be evaluating the wall anchorage forces of the cylinder walls and how they transfer into the diaphragm. This has been a real concern um, over the past 30 years about how these anchorages uh, perform in earthquakes. We'll also be classifying the shear walls for design for the purposes of in-plane loads and familiarity with really the current 2015 IBC provisions. And we'll also be glimpsing into the future of design directions that might be on the horizon when we look out to uh, ASCE 2022 or, or beyond. So really the, the scope of the presentation can be broken into, as Maria said, those three uh, thirds of presentation with question and answers and breaks and the first portion is going to be the slender wall design from a concrete perspective and then we'll have a break and then we'll be looking at wall anchorage which would be at the wall as well as taking that anchorage force into the diaphragm that will be our uh, second portion of the presentation within another break and then we'll look at some shear wall issues as well as some future possibilities as maybe where the code might be heading uh, nothing definitive yet, but just to give you some perspective of how these buildings behave, as well as efforts to maybe um, change the building code to better reflect the behavior of these buildings. So let's get started. We'll get started in the slender wall design. And with a slender wall design, we're simply looking at the slender wall method of ACI 318. And in the current edition of ACI 318, the, the 19, uh, 2014 edition, it's uh, been placed in section 11.8. And this allows very slender walls. Unlike other compression members, these walls have a very thin cross section. But in order to do that, there's some very important challenges that have to be addressed. One is going to be the big deflection that can create secondary moments. So P delta effects are very important and are required to be addressed. Also, eccentricities are important. When you have a roof load coming into these slender walls that is not directly in line with the axis of the wall, it can create a fairly large eccentricity, uh, eccentric moment. And this moment needs to be addressed. And also these walls, in order to prevent them from buckling, uh, they have to be tension controlled. And there needs to be a reduction or, or a limitation on the axial stress so that we don't get a uh, heavy back. Uh, a sense, these walls are sensitive to instability if they start getting a fair amount of axial load and then they're compression members instead of tension control. So we're gonna limit the axial stress on these and the deflection has to be reserved for um, service level uh, events. We don't want to have permanent deformations in these walls that are potentially susceptible to uh, bowing under service level events. So we're going to be checking those as well. So the presentation is going to follow a number of uh, steps for cylinder wall design. We'll look at the historical development because I think that's important for the perspective, including ACI's 318, the past provisions and the present provisions because there has been a change in ACI from it, their earlier uh, provisions for slender walls to the current provisions. And so we'll talk about the reason for those changes along the way as well. And then I'll give a design example <clears throat> for slender walls before we reach to our break. All right. So let's start off with a historical development of these provisions. So we all have a familiarity with why we have what we have currently in the provisions. 
And uh, beginning in, well, really, if you want to go back to the beginning, 1909, I think, <laughs> was the first tilt-up uh, wall panel that was ever erected. But it really didn't get started until the 19... 60s and 70s that it started becoming a little bit more common and then really like blockbuster hit in the 1970s 1980s and all the way through the current day these walls are typically site cast instead of precast being brought in from uh, a plant on a truck uh, 